Hello, my quilting friends. My name is Leah Day, and yes, I am still working on my Christmas tree quilt. I have one last video to teach you, and that is the background, really the most important part, because this is what ended up taking the most time out of everything that I did in this entire quilt. I spent the most time quilting the background, because of course that is the space that takes up the most space on the quilt but I made a very good decision and that was with the filler design that I chose for the background. Sharp stippling it is one of my favorite designs. It's fast, it's easy, very, actually there's no travel stitching at all unless I run up against my Christmas tree or the presents. So it's one of those designs that I can wiggle around really freely and be able to quilt the background quickly. That is absolutely key with a quilt that you are trying to finish in a hurry. So let's get going. I'm gonna teach you how to quilt sharp stippling on a smallish scale on your long arm. So this is a beautiful sharp stippling design and you can see I am using kind of a navy blue thread over my black background fabric and that's just so I have a nice contrast so I can see what I'm doing, where I've stitched before, you know, how close I'm getting to these feathers, you know, to these motifs and it's helping me stay on track. I don't like 100% matching thread. Number one, I can't see what I'm doing. And then number two, you know, you're, you're bothering to put the stitches on the quilt. You might as well get the credit for doing it. But you know, in a situation like this, obviously we don't want every single design to stand out. It would be too overwhelming with such a complex piecing design. So we definitely want this to read as though it's matching, you know, so you're gonna look at it from a distance and you're not gonna see anything other than black fabric. But if someone gets close enough to it, they're gonna be able to see this beautiful texture in the background. So that's really a big reason why I like to do a contrast like this. And it is a little scary, obviously, because if you make a mistake, you know, that, that mistake can end up showing. And I just realized something, I'm getting pretty close to this uh, design here and I know that I'm going to be quilting another one of these motifs around it so I want to be really careful not to get too close to that and uh, you know be, not be able to stitch that motif so I want to go on ahead and wiggle my design downward and you can see that that shape back there ended up a little bit weird for that direction change and decision but that's okay uh, the point here is to have a consistent fill so that way, when you're looking at this from a distance, that's the key, it's a wall hanging, so you're typically going to be looking at it from five to six feet away. You're not gonna see kind of big open areas, big blotchy spaces. It's gonna really just read as the same design consistently stitched over the surface. So let's actually talk through sharp stippling and the rules behind this design. All of the filler designs that I've created have very simple rules that govern how they are stitched on your quilt, how they interact with other things. So in the case of sharp stippling, the simple rule is stitch a wiggly line that comes to sharp points that does not cross itself. Now you might think, hearing those rules, that you're not allowed to cross any of your lines of quilting, and that's not the case. Uh, this is just the rule for this particular design. So I've got other designs where, you know, like feathers, that I stitch on top of my previous lines of stitching, you know, that I do all kinds of different stuff because that's a different design with a different set of rules. Think of those rules kind of like writing your name in cursive. Once you memorize the basic steps, you can pretty much write your name anywhere and any size. So these rules for these quilting designs are very, very similar. Once you memorize the rules and how a specific design works, how you flow with it, the different shapes and angles that you like to stitch, then you can pretty much use it anywhere. So with sharp stippling, I'm quilting this on a quarter inch scale. And I like these long wiggly shapes. So I like to wiggle back, kind of interlock with something else wiggle forward and kind of interlock it here against that motif. You know, I really like those kinds of shapes, but you can also stitch really short little flame shapes back and forth. That's just a gentle movement. Now, when it comes to controlling my long arm, that's really kind of the challenge here 
on something when I'm trying to stitch number one carefully and then number two on a slightly smallish scale. Now this is not a micro scale by any means. There's roughly about a quarter inch between my lines of quilting. But in order to manage that and keep it consistent, that's why I have my hand down on my uh, machine and on the quilt. I have a ruler base and if I put pressure here near the needle and I keep my hand on the quilt, I'm actually pressing down very subtly. That is um, putting a little bit of pressure on that ruler base and that's giving me a little bit more control. Now an alternative, if I really wanted a lot more control, then I would take this bag of red kidney beans <laughs> and plop it back here. And uh, that can serve uh, as a nice added weight. And that added weight adds pressure and you know it's more consistent than my hand being on the quilt, obviously. Uh, and that slows down the machine's movement, adds a little bit more resistance, uh, and that can give me a little bit more control. And see, as I put the red kidney beans on the quilt, now I can put two hands on the handlebars and I have that much more control. And look how my stitches, my design has definitely improved for that. So that's something to keep in mind. If you are struggling, if you feel like, you know, it's just, you know, your design is just not looking the way you want. You're just kind of out of control and you really want to improve your free hand, free motion quilting on your frame. Well then try the bag of beans. It really can work well. So I'm just gonna continue wiggling around as you can see. This beautiful sharp stippling design is just gonna wiggle around all of these motifs filling in this quilt. And that is gonna be my background design. I'm gonna be doing this a whole lot until this entire Christmas tree quilt is filled. So that's it for this video. You know, I said I was quilting sharp stippling on a small-ish scale. There's of course a lot of different things I could mean by that. I could mean a micro scale, like an eighth of an inch between my lines of quilting. I could use, you know, say small-ish is, you know, quarter to a half inch scale. Uh, it really depends on the quilt, the purpose that you're doing with, you know, what you're gonna do with it. This is a wall hanging. It is never gonna go on a bed. It's never gonna get washed. It is really decorative, especially with these glitter fabrics that I still just have no idea what's gonna happen with, right? So this is going to be a quilt that just gets hung on the wall one time of the year and then put in storage most of the time. So because of that, I decided to quilt this on a quarter inch scale, which is small enough to add definition to my motifs, such as my feather blocks and the feathers over the tree, but not so small that I'm quilting it for a million years, right? So I hope that you learned a lot in this video and you're gonna give this beautiful background filler a try. If you'd like to learn more about this Christmas tree quilt, you can find all of the videos that I've shared on this. We did lots of ruler quilting. We did a little bit of QCT, lots of fun things, and it was a great learning experience. So come and find all of the videos linked up together at leahday.com frame. Until next time, let's go quilt.